Storyline 360's screen recording tool makes it really easy to record the activity on your screen so you can show rather than tell your learners what they need to know. And in this tutorial, you'll learn how to record a screencast video and add it to your e-learning course. All right, so we're starting out here in Storyline, just a blank project in Story View. Let's go ahead and record the screen by coming up here to click Record Screen. And that's going to hide Storyline, and it brings up Storyline's recording window. And you can see that if you move your cursor in the center, you can drag the recorder around. Now, by default, the recording window is the same size as the slide dimensions in Storyline. And if you keep this setting, it's going to give you the best screen quality. But you're not limited to this, right? You can, you can grab one of the frame handles right here and scale it in if you want to drill down to a specific area. Or you can expand it if you wanted to capture more of the window. The other option is to resize your software application to fit inside the actual screen recorder, right? So you could do it like that. And then finally, the other option, i reset this to 720, is to hold the shift key and then scale. And you'll see that that actually maintains the same aspect ratio as the initial slide. And so if you want to capture a, a larger area, this is probably your best option for at least maintaining the best screen quality because you're actually working at the same aspect ratio as your slide and storyline. Now, if you come down here, you can see that Storyline has automatically detected the microphone. Now, if you had multiple microphone inputs, audio inputs, you could switch those here, or you could choose to record without audio. And then finally, you have a few preferences over here for customizing your shortcut keys, as well as uh, the audio inputs and outputs. I'm going to leave everything at the default for this example. All right, so once you have your application framed up in the recorder the way you like, go ahead and click record. You're ready to go. You get a quick countdown, and now everything I do and say is going to be recorded. So let's go ahead and bring that shape onto the slide. So we'll just insert shapes, and I'll just grab a rectangle and drag it on the slide. Now we want to animate this, so we go up here to the Animations tab, select Add Animation, Fly In, and there it goes. Over here on the duration, let's set this to be a little slower. So we actually can demonstrate the text entry. So I'm going to add, so I'm going to enter 3.00. And let's preview our, our new animation. So click the preview button. And there's our animation. All right, that's good enough for this example. So I'm going to click done. And Storyline's going to process the video. All right, this opens the insert slides window. And you can preview the video and listen to what you just recorded. And up here, you can give your video a new name. It's always a good idea to do this, especially if you're going to work with multiple screencasts. It makes it a lot easier to find them. And then down here, you can choose how the video will work on your slide. So this first example, video on a single slide, will just insert the video like any other type of video. It's not going to be interactive, but if you have audio with it, it's just going to be a video audio screencast. So it's really more for demonstrations or typical screencasts where the video just plays. Now you can also insert your video as a step-by-step -step slides, and we actually have three different modes for the step-by-steps. If you insert the video as a view mode, your learners can follow along because it's going to show the mouse movements with captions for each step that you create, but it's really more of a demonstration to walk learners through each of the steps. Now for the try mode, it's a way to give learners a chance to try the process themselves in an ungraded assessment way. So it's a good way for learners to practice what they've learned without formally testing them. Now for test mode, Storyline is going to break your process down into step-by-step -step graded assessments where each individual slide will automatically become a quiz slide. So that's another way to formally test them without providing any hints or feedback captions. And then you can choose whether to insert the slides in a new scene or an existing scene. We only have one scene in this demo, but you would see all the scenes available if you had more. And then you can also give uh, the scene a new name. So let's go through uh, these options and see them in action. So let's begin with the video on a single slide and then see what we can do. You can see right here with video on a single slide, we also have the option to uh, show the cursor. So we, we definitely want to show the cursor for this example. So I go ahead and click Insert. And once it's done processing, you can see that it inserted our video in a new scene. And let's take a look at the slide by double-clicking the thumbnail. And you can see it's just like any other slide in Storyline. Down here in the timeline, I can see my video here. You can also see the duration of the video, right? It extends the timeline out. 
Now if you want to edit your video, you can double click the video. That brings up the video tools options. You can preview the video. You can adjust the video's volume. There's an edit video option, which we'll look at in a future tutorial. We can also choose where the video displays, whether it's in the slide or opens in a new browser window, and then whether the video plays automatically or whether you want to have the learners click the video to play it or add a trigger, say to another object like a button or a character that when clicked, then the video begins playing. You also have an option for video controls. By default, it's set to none, which means you can use the seek bar on the player. Or if you want to choose to add the video controls here on the slide, you can do that as well. So just add it below the video. So because this video is just on the timeline, like any other object, we can actually add additional objects over and above our video. So for example, if we wanted to add a help layer, maybe just to provide some additional context for the video, we can do that as well. So you could just insert a button. And this will just be a, a help button. So we'll just add help. And so the idea is if you, if you have a question while you're watching the video, we'll provide some additional help. So if you click the button, we'll show a slide layer. So we'll create a new layer, title that help layer. And I'll just add a shape background here, and then we'll just put in some placeholder text. So this would just be some more information about PowerPoint or the specific video tutorial uh, you created. Jump back down to the base layer, and the idea is that when I click this button, I want to do what? I want to show a layer. Let's add a new trigger for that. So a new trigger. What do I want to do? I want to show a layer, and the layer will be the help when the user clicks the button. Click OK. And usually when you show a layer, you need a way to hide that layer so you can return. So I'm going to go back to the help layer. And we'll just add another button here that says, when you click this, we don't want to show a layer. We want to hide the layer, this layer, when user clicks button. Click OK. All right, so let's go back to the base layer. Now the way we have the button on the timeline, it's just as long as the video, so it's persistent the entire time the slide is visible. And so if we preview our slide, we can see that the button is visible, and at any time we click the button, we can show the layer. Click the close button to return, and click the help button again. Now you notice that the video continues playing even though we're on the help layer. If you want to pause that video so the learner can focus on the help, you can do that as well. We just need to pause the base layer while the slide layer is up. So here's how that works. Close the preview and come over to the slide layer help and click the gear icon for the properties. And then over here under base layer, you can see that you have an option to pause the timeline of the base layer. So that's just automatically going to pause the video while the learner is on this help layer. So select it and click OK. And let's go ahead and just preview this one more time. So preview the slide. All right, so you can see and hear the video. Let's go ahead and click the Help button. And the video pauses on the base layer. So the learner can actually focus on the help, get what they need, click the Close button, and now they can resume the video. And that's all you do for recording a screencast video. Just record the video. It inserts it on a slide. If you want to enhance the video, you can. You can add additional objects above it. But essentially, that video is going to play like any other video. So go ahead and give it a shot. If you have any questions with recording screencast videos, just post a question in the forum, and we'll be more than happy to help you out.